All right, welcome back. We got another Balor arm sword, 15th century Italian long sword. Take a look at some specs on this one, up close looks. We'll do some cut testing on it. Let's get to it. Overall length, a little bit over 45 inches from the pommel all the way to the tip of the blade. We have a double-edged sword here with a diamond cross section. You can see as it catches the light, that little bump in the middle. Pretty sweet aesthetically, makes cutting a lot easier as well. Uh, blade length is a little bit over 37 inches, 37 and three quarters, I believe. We got another Balor Arms. You can see the logo stamped in right, right by the guard. This one's got some little hooks on the guard as well. That way if a bind was to happen with sword to sword contact, you can't just slide off and go to hit the hand. It ends up getting locked and then you can end up hitting the other person a lot easier. This is a cut and thrust sword. This is usually intended to be a two-handed blade that you work with. But because of how versatile this is, you could use it with one hand as you're coming out. Almost like a short spear, honestly, as you come out with it. So very easy and very versatile to move with. The scabbard. Oh yeah, by the way. 5160 high carbon steel. Um, looking at the pommel, it's a peen pommel. We can see. Really, really like this one as well. I like having the grip over the pommel too. And it has this little traction right here. That way the grip stays nice and solid. It's a wood handled scabbard with two sections for each hand, whether you're here or you're choked down here. Either way, there's plenty of, plenty of room for that. Now, the scabbard, wood cord scabbard. Slides in nicely, leather wraps. It's stitched on the back. It's got the rain guard. Slide all the way down. Steel tip, just like the last one. And these little notches here so that however you want to, if you want to end up wearing this and carrying this in reenactment and stuff like that, these little notches allow you to have that. So if you have a sword frog and a sword belt, you can keep that in place here. You can notch it up here or even go really high up as well. Depends on your height and your preference of how high you want to carry this. From here, let's do some up close looks in the scabbard, out of the scabbard, and then we'll do some cut testing. Let's get to it. <laughs> no. All right, so from here, let's do some cut testing with the Italian longsword, the 15th century one from Balor Arms. Let's see what I can do. Let's get to it. That went well. So, super solid cut. Like I said before, diamond cross section. So it takes away some of the mass from it. 
So if we had just a regular flat blade, for example, it may, depending on the edge and also the point of balance and a bunch of other different factors, it's not gonna really work as well, but with a diamond cross section, it acts as kind of a lever that allows you to slash a lot more cleanly and allows you to really get a better cut, as you can see. All right, so thanks for joining me for this video, Valor Arms 15th Century Italian Longsword. Get some specs, up close looks, cut testing. If you like blades like this from Valor Arms, we've reviewed like three of them for just this month alone. So there's a big variety of seeing different designs that they carry and hopefully something that you'll like as well that we carry here called Bathina. You want the Tommy mats? We got them. You want sword frogs and different sword belts? We got a bunch of leather accessories that can complement a sword as well or another sword or a dagger if you're looking for that in a collection. Subscribe to the channel, like this video, and I'll talk to you soon.